All right, I was just about to leave the office and I just can't stop thinking about this new um, prototype keg slash fermenter that we have here. I have a floating dip tube for this. I think it's gonna be like just a super sweet setup. I just wanna brew a beer for it so bad and I'm just gonna go for it. All right, let's answer the question that might be on some of your minds. And that is, what is pressure fermentation? Pressurized fermentation is exactly what it sounds like. The fermentation process takes place in a pressurized vessel using a spunding or relief valve to regulate pressure. Okay, but why ferment under pressure? First and foremost, fermenting under pressure can make better beer by suppressing unwanted flavor esters while simultaneously increasing hop aroma and flavor retention, making for a cleaner, more flavorful beer. Second, it's faster. Pressure fermentation allows for the fermentation process to be conducted at warmer temperatures, which speeds up the process. It also pre-carbs your beer, which can shave time off the final carbonation process. Third, it's cheaper. Being able to cleanly ferment at room temperature eliminates the need for expensive temperature control chambers. Also, you'll need less CO2 for full carbonation, so you may save some money there as well. One quick note, both ale and lager yeast can benefit from pressure fermentation, but in our opinion, it's most useful for lager beer because the goal of lager fermentation in general is to make clean, neutral beer, and the pressure fermentation process is great for that. Keep in mind that pressure fermentation isn't ideal for all beers. In some cases, it will actually suppress flavor compounds that you want in the beer. For example, you wouldn't likely want to use this method with a Bavarian Hefeweizen yeast. So how do you pressure ferment beer? Brew, aerate, and pitch yeast just like normal, but after that, transfer to a keg for the fermentation process. Add a pressure gauge and a spunding valve. Set the spunding valve to about 15 PSI, then just wait. The beer will be done fermenting in a few days. Once it's finished, cold crash if you have the ability to do that. Then transfer to a clean keg add a bit more CO2 and enjoy. That's it. Finally, here's everything you'll need to build a basic pressure fermentation system. A short gas hose, a ball lock fitting, a brass T, a pressure gauge, and lastly, an adjustable spunding valve. You can find this equipment on our website, so check out the link below. To assemble, attach the pressure gauge and the spunding valve to the gas hose. Attach the other end to the ball lock fitting and secure to the end on the keg. We're also using a floating dip tube here, which we've been experimenting with recently. These can replace the stock tubes that come with kegs, which pull liquid from the bottom of the keg. In theory, floating tubes always pull beer from the top of the keg 
in practice, sometimes the floating dip tube works and other times it hasn't. We definitely recommend trying this yourself, but don't expect it to work perfectly every time. And as always, make sure to clean your keg with PBW. Rinse thoroughly with warm water and then sanitize with star sand to make sure you get rid of any unwanted bugs that could potentially spoil your beer. Lastly, once fermentation is finished and the beer is cold, pop a keg tap on the out and you're good to go. So we're about ready to add the wort to the fermenter. Basically just need to dump the star sand out. We're at exactly 70 degrees, exactly where I want it to be. This thing is done. It's 10.09. Uh, Beer Smith is telling me that 1009 is good. As according to Saf Lager, it might be able to go a little bit lower, but I'm guessing with the pressure that we put on it, potentially not because the, the pressure kind of mutes, mutes the beer. So what I'm gonna do is add some Super Clear here. It's a two-part clearing agent, two-stage fining. Um, and I am going to go ahead and put pressure back on this. I'm going to keep constant pressure on it. Um, I've heard that that helps with the uh, aroma, hop aroma. So, okay. So, uh, this has been in here an hour actually, which is what the directions say. I have one ounce of warm water here. Okay, so now this needs to sit for 24 to 48 hours, and I'm gonna cold crash it as well. I'm gonna pressurize it, but I'm also gonna purge it. You know, if this is like a, like a hazy, you know, New England IPA or something we were doing here, I wouldn't do this. I'd just, you know, leave all the stuff in suspension because that's what the beer is supposed to look like. But since I'm making a light lager here, um, I'm figuring, you know, I'd go ahead and see if I can get it to clear up. We'll see. Banana. Banana. <laughs> Banana. Welcome to the future. It's been a couple weeks. About to drink this beer. I've never fermented a beer like this before. So um, we'll see if this uh, keg of destiny will reveal transcendental truths. Only the future will tell. Will this unlock our chi? Will we feel tingling in our swimsuit areas? I think my beer chakra is vibrating. That's not your beer chakra. What? <laughs> oh, there it is. Ooh, little book, Perfect. Dude. That, you want that? Yeah. You want 60% okay. foam. Okay. I do. Right. Look at that. Look at how fucking clear that is. This is the magic of the future. Wow. I say, all right. This is uh, the true path. I was kind of like half expecting a eye roll, face palm, shrug emoji out of this. I didn't really know what to expect, but I'll tell you what, really what I'm getting is more of a folded spiritual hands emoji kind of vibe. I'm feeling hashtag blessed right now. You know, they say variety is the spice of life, but if this was like the last beer, if it was like, okay, this is the beer you get to drink from here on out, right. I'd be like, 
well, that's okay. Right. Fine. I accept. Fair enough. Sometimes you get a green grass vibe on the yeah. uh, lager. Not so here. It's no. a real clean fermentation. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not getting no off flavors, no, no sulfur, no eggy no diacetyl. lager, no. no diacetyl. You know when you're mowing the lawn and you get those stripes just perfect, and then, you know, you get your neighbors over. You guys all have your pleated pants on, your polos. Tucked in? Tucked in, and you pull one of these out. That's when you know you've done it right. Dude, I re-pop my polo when that happens. (laughs) I take my visor off, I flip it upside down, I put it on backwards, (laughs) um, and I pop the Oakleys right on. It, it's it's finished in three or four days. And then, four days. It was done. then you throw it in a logger temp? Yeah, and then I just toss it in the old... Is it under pressure uh, then still? Fridge. You know what I did is I put some super clear in it. Okay. Uh, which is why it's pretty super, super clear. clear. Yeah. And then tossed it in the old logger fridge and it's been sitting at 33. Um, Dude, you can pick up like a dorm fridge or a Craigslist chest freezer for nothing these days on the internet you can just drive around the neighborhood until you see one in an alley (laughs) you (laughs) drive around so you see an open garage door (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, just take their kegerator chest freezer boom i'm thinking um normalize this beer cancel all other beers but really though this is and this is impressive i'm impressed i'd be hard pressed to go back to non-pressure fermented lagers at this point i just don't see it happening 100% 100% recommend. Drew this beer. Recipe on our website. Check it out. Clawhammersupply.com. Thanks. <laughs> Open your palate chakra, Emmett. You're going to want to vibrate the beer through your palate chakra into your, into your concavity. Allow the, allow the essence of the lager to fill your concavity and repressurize your interior with positive vibrations. <laughs>